welcome. We're so glad you're here. It's, it's July. It's summertime. It's really a, a packed schedule uh, with meeting opportunities, whether it be formal, oriented from STS and ATS, or something informal as what you're, you're participating in today. Um, so number one, we really appreciate your time and glad you're here. We want very much an open forum. So we titled the meeting that way on purpose. Uh, we're not going to uh, hope it doesn't ever feel like we're lecturing to you. Um, we want to present to you and then discuss these issues. Admetus's position is one of uh, bringing to market a tissue that we think you've not seen before. We think it's unique enough that it should think it should create new thought in terms of how you're going to take care of your patients, how you potentially use tissue to take care of your patients. That's our role in this. Uh, beyond that, as Tom mentioned, we otherwise, from a technique standpoint, from a growth within, within your own surgical specialty, comes from you, and we are here to only facilitate that by creating forums like this. So with uh, the strength of our faculty and then an opportunity to spend time in a wet lab and actually get your hands on the material and discuss those new techniques with the leaders, the thought leaders that are, that are moving these things forward is, is why we're here. So uh, thank you again for that. So Admetus is a company that uh, originates out of Australia and our corporate headquarters are still in Australia and the technology itself uh, originated in Australia. Uh, Professor Leon Neatling is, uh, we call him our godfather, uh, is the scientist who had, uh, has put in certainly more than a decade but has documented via a very impressive series of publications his efforts through preclinical study uh, as he whittled his way and fine-tuned a tissue engineering process that we currently today called ADAPT. And this process is again what separates us from other tissues that are currently available. Um, it's certainly more than 10 years in development um, and has, has now been refined to a point where we were able to bring it to market in North America in June of 2014, after getting clearance, I think, in January or, or March uh, of that time frame. Um, what this process does, uh, and in terms of production, it takes more than 14, 14 days to take uh, raw bovine pericardium material and have it processed uh, before it is jarred and put in a package. So there's more than two weeks worth of production that actually takes place. This process will fully transform uh, bovine pericardium uh, into a truly acellular uh, material. Uh, it maintains or preserves the elasticity and that pure collagen structure that we think is very important. And uh, most importantly, probably, is it eliminates any antigenic potential uh, that would uh, otherwise exist from a xenographic material. Uh, our process is unique as well, is that we have no inflammatory reaction that is inherently associated with aldehydes. Um, so this is a very unique process and gives us the opportunity to uh, uh, present this new material to you. Our indications for use are probably as broad as any material that we're aware of, uh, at least in North America. Uh, we are able to uh, use and apply this material for uh, septation repair, uh, pericardial closure, great and peripheral vascular repair, as well as a full host of valve and annular reconstruction. Um, this, is, this is unique in the industry where we're aware of other competitors that do not have uh, these same FDA indications. It's a three-step process. And what we've learned from, from Leon's work is that all three steps uh, are equally important. Uh, we can't get to this, uh, this type of performance without doing all three of these correctly. Decellularization is, is kind of um, become like tissue, uh, or the, the, the term tissue, where it's a very uh, generalized term. And a lot of people will say that they decellularize. Uh, we would disagree just a little bit. Um, so we think decellularization is absolutely paramount, where we want alpha-gal epitope removed. We want all the nucleic acids, all cell remnants. And of course, the obvious, which are calcium binding sites such as uh, phospholipids, removed. So we work very hard on completely uh, decellularizing that material. And again, we think we do a very unique fashion of it. Uh, Cross-linking is mandatory. You know, unless you've got um, uh, another valve leaflet somewhere uh, that you can find in situ that, that is the patient's own, uh, the material is not otherwise designed for that type of durability, for that type of dynamic position. So if you take autologous pericardium or something else, I think it's been shown quite clearly that for that material to be biostable, to be strong, and to be applicable, it needs to be cross-linked and to be effectively stabilized. Uh, so Leon was, was successful in creating a manner of cross-linking that, again, is very unique when compared to, to other uh, systems that are out there. 
Detoxifying is where we are actually proprietary as well. So not only do we cross-link and process the material uniquely, but we're able to detoxify uh, and remove some of the other uh, components in the, in the processing so that they no longer exist in the material or in the jar when you open it. We verify that we're decellularized with, uh, by directly looking at the material. So this is acridine orange uh, of a fluorescent antibody stain uh, that will tag nucleic acids. So the image on the left uh, is the material uh, in a control fashion with the stain showing nucleic acids very prevalent. Uh, on the right is control, which is adapt uh, after our treatment, again showing uh, complete removal of nucleic acids and any other cell remnants. The cross-linking that, that is uh, unique to us uses uh, aldehyde. Uh, it's a unique aldehyde. It's monomeric uh, as opposed to the large polymer glutaraldehyde chain. It is a very low concentration at 0.05%. This low molecular weight monomer is able to penetrate the collagen fibers of this material very deeply and uniformly. So we have a cross-linking that's enhanced uh, and, and very consistent throughout the entire material. This is why we're able to still take advantage of the inherent elasticity that exists in these collagen fibers. So it's not rigid, it's not stiff, uh, and it is certainly more stable uh, than the material that is otherwise crosslinked in a different fashion. The uniqueness of that monomer also allows us to remove the monomer. So any unbound aldehydes are effectively detoxified and removed from our processing when we're done. We don't think that's possible with a large polymer chain. As a matter of fact, we know it isn't. So if you use a different aldehyde, you will not be able to remove the aldehyde from the tissue or its storage solution. We are able to do so because of that unique aldehyde. And we verify that with an aminocoproic acid assay, which will take a look specifically, it's a reagent that would react with glutaraldehyde, and our material shows zero. So although we use aldehydes in our cross-linking, we are as aggressive as any other product available in eliminating them and offer a product that does not have any aldehydes in it. The series of tests uh, and, and uh, things are, are extensive. Uh, some of the highlights are our NAMSA uh, third nation here in North America. I'm sure it's well known. Uh, they do a full host of cytotoxicity, sensitization, and uh, other, other tests. And of course, we've passed all those tests with flying colors. To verify that we've got a very biostable material, uh, there's a couple of different tests, whether it's uh, shrinkage temperature, uh, which is one, but enzymatic degradation is, is a priority. Uh, enzymatic degradation is simply uh, uh, picking an enzyme. Uh, in this test, we use pronase. Uh, the tissues are then soaked in the enzyme, and the weight pre-soaking and post-soaking will determine the amount or the percentage of uh, enzymatic degradation that the, the tissue uh, succumbs to. What we see here in the graph is, is basically a clear identification of materials that have been cross-linked. And the ones that, if you will fail, the two on the lower right, are both materials that are not cross-linked and hence they are not as biostable and are not resistant to pronase degradation. The strength testing on the right is unique to us. Uh, and what I mean by that is we've not seen any such material from uh, any other competitor that's in the market uh, or nor are we aware of it being done with autologous pericardium after it's been treated. We think these mechanical properties of strength, uh, of elasticity, uh, Young's modulus matter a great deal as uh, we have indications for valve repair and high dynamic applications. Uh, therefore, uh, we were very much at earnest in this with a third party uh, in, in, in Germany. And basically, our Young's modulus at 61 uh, newtons per millimeter squared is virtually identical to that of the human uh, aortic leaflet. The ultimate strength is at 9 newtons, which is more than four times greater than the, the human aorta. So we do have a very strong and a very pliable material. Because these properties are so similar to the human aortic valve, we thought we'd uh, put that up in, in a graph and, and just kind of look at it. Uh, another piece of data is, is the ultimate strain percentage. Uh, and this verifies, again, that the elasticity that's inherent in this collagen structure is still in our material. The ultimate strain percentage is amount or a percentage of given a tissue uh, noted over uh, a constant force. This constant force is one millipascal of stress that's applied in two different directions uh, on these structures. In the circumferential orientation, um, as we do this right, uh, the circumferential orientation, stress in this plane for the human aortic valve will yield to about 18%. Uh, cardio cell in yielding, and again, a similar plane that you can kind of see the morphology of the collagen structures oriented in the same manner, will yield at about 23%.
the radial plane, uh, or from the circum circumference out to the center of the aorta, uh, yields in the human aortic valve about 23%, whereas cardiosol is 33 uh, these numbers are not statistically significant. We didn't do a series of 10, 15, or 20. They are to indicate, again, that we've maintained that elasticity and that our collagen structure is very similar to that that exists in the human aortic valve. Calcification, still probably the hallmark for whether a tissue that's used for implantation will fail or be considered a success. Simply avoiding calcification has been one of the greater challenges, really, for this entire industry, and it's been chased by many companies for a very long time. Um, and again, Leon's uh, preclinical data stands out in, in a very unique manner. The RAD sub-Q is uh, one of the first preclinical uh, models that's used uh, to assess this, this type of success. And uh, using a control of 0.2% glutaraldehyde as opposed to 0.6%, so even the control, if you will, is, is optimized when compared to normal standards in the operating room. Uh, at 26 weeks in the RAD sub-Q, there's 92 micrograms of uh, uh, calcium per milligram of tissue whereas the ADAPT processed material will show uh, 1.36 micrograms. Out at 52 weeks, which is a time frame that is again unheard of, no other publication comes beyond 16 weeks that we're aware of, and we're out to 52 weeks. The control has 136 micrograms of calcium and we have 2.56. This chart shows a, a summary of uh, published uh, articles, again looking at calcification, uh, as in terms of other processes used to minimize calcification, time frames from three weeks to six to eight weeks, heat and heat and shake uh, is that of uh, Edwards uh, with controls uh, shown in the column. And the calcification numbers are all, all quite interesting here, uh, seven and four micrograms of calcium, whereas the ADAPT stacks up at one, 2.56 with uh, uh, multiple time frames. This is also borne out uh, not just in the, the rat, is that me, I'm sorry? Right. Okay. In another model, which is the juvenile sheet model, um, as I'm getting walking through the security at the airport, it happens all the time. Oh my! In the juvenile sheet model, uh, we have a very nice comparison as well, uh, where a product called PhotoFix uh, was was tested by a group at the University of Minnesota, so our backyard. Um, and at that time frame, this is published in the, in the year 2000, where uh, the control was a Carpentier Edwards valve, and uh, the photofix leaflets were implanted for a time frame of 218 days. And they measured at the time 6.2 micrograms a kilogram uh, per milligram of tissue. And this was heralded as uh, extremely low calcification uh, in the publication. In our juvenile sheet model, uh, using ADAPT treated uh, leaflets, uh, we also went out 254 days uh, from Christian Brizard's uh, work and, and showed at the end of the day 0.47 micrograms in the control group, and our material showed 0.46. That's 14 times less calcium uh, in the same model and uh, literally at the same time frame. Uh, so we think our, our tissue processing is, is quite unique. Uh, to spend just a few more uh, moments on Christian Brizard's work, uh, the rest of this study is, is really quite simple where, again, there were, there were uh, uh, eight animals survived for uh, seven months. Uh, the control group was autologous pericardium treated with rapid uh, glutaraldehyde. It was 0.625% for eight minutes and rinsed in, in three separate uh, saline ba baths, uh, whereas cardiocell uh, was the study group. A pulmonary cusp was replaced in its entirety. And in the mitral position, uh, a patch graft was placed on, I think it's the posterior leaflet, actually, um, but one, one of the leaflets. Uh, at explant, uh, the valves all actually looked quite, quite good. The hemodynamics were appropriate, and, and the valves generally functioned well. And uh, not able to, to completely throw autologous pericardium under the bus, as we would expect, uh, we did have new collagen development on the outside of the, the uh, patch itself. But it is a much uh, less mature, it is more of a fibril, and it is certainly impregnated throughout the specimen with uh, signs of inflammation, of inflammatory cells. This is a, a little bit of a thicker graft than what is shown in the cardiocell group, where again, our collagen structure should look a lot like the H&E stains that I had shown earlier. That structure is very much intact. We have a very dense and a very mature collagen development on the surface of our material with virtually no signs of inflammation. Picrocerius red showing uh, a, a similar um, uh, structure, again, with our material in, in the middle and then the new collagen formation on both the ventricular uh, and the aortic side of, the, of that mitral valve, or atrial and ventricular side, excuse me. 
And this is a trichrome stain showing new cell development within that collagen, interstitial cells uh, and smooth muscle cells also being newly formed. Uh, no magic there. Obviously, this is the, the healing response of the animal, but our material allows that healing response. Uh, and I think, don't think this is possible if there is an inflammatory environment or something that would be toxic as that's a, that is associated with aldehydes. And again, the calcification was, uh, was certainly uh, minimal. And I think the summary for calcification for us, and, and we get to say this across both the rat sub-Q as well as the juvenile sheep model, uh, and probably a series of four to five different uh, preclinical studies, our explanted material has less calcium in it than what exists in the surrounding subcutaneous tissue in the animal. So it doesn't mean, again, that there's magic uh, and that we're removing calcium, but it does mean that we have very effectively removed any calcium binding site from our material. Uh, we have also looked at using the ADAPT system in other tissues and other models to verify that the process is what's working and, and not necessarily, uh, if you will, the bovine pericardium or something that we're unaware of. So the ADAPT process has also been shown to work when used to treat uh, cryopreserved human pericardium, where again we're able to uh, show a dramatic reduction in the calcium potential of the cryopreserved human pericardium after treating with ADAPT. Uh, this is the human pericardium, and this is our uh, product, ADAPT, uh, ADAPT Collagen. And this is pre-treatment of human pericardium and bovine pericardium. So that extreme reduction in calcium resistance has been shown in outside of uh, other materials as well. And this is the, the most recent press release, actually, from our organization. is a study that originated in 2008 in South Africa, where 30 children uh, were implanted with cardiocell in, in, in congenital, uh, because of congenital lesions. Uh, most of these procedures were septation. Uh, there was some tetralogy of flow. Uh, would not categorize them as, as highly complex. Uh, but obviously, this is our first implant in, in man, so a very appropriate way uh, to move forward. We are now out. Um, seven years and one patient has been evaluated and showing absolutely no calcification or deterioration uh, of that implant. And let's see, I'm sorry to read to you, but again, this is relatively new. Um, we have, I think, seven of those patients. Eleven of the patients are out five years having been reviewed. So brand new data for us is uh, uh, obviously is a material that does not get explanted and we're very proud of that. But when we get an opportunity to look back, uh, we still show, again, no calcification or deterioration of that material. We have, that is an old slide, so I'm going to be in trouble for that. Uh, we have more than uh, 2,500 implants now in, in at least four countries and have uh, 40 counts in the United States and a, a very similar number in Europe as well. So our advancement from ground zero, uh, literally just 18 months ago to where we are today, uh, we think is very impressive and uh, are anxious for that growth to continue. Um, other product management details, the shelf life is two years and I forgot to mention that the, one of the nicer advantages of our material as well is it comes right out of the jar and can be implanted. So it doesn't have to be stirred, uh, rinsed, refrigerated. So this is readily available off the shelf. So in conclusion, we, again, uh, as, as the marketers of the process ADAPT, feel that all three of these, these, these tissue processing uh, categories are paramount. Um, no one of them done well will, will yield the same type of tissue that, that cardiocell, or the same type of performance that cardiocell yields. So effectively decellarizing, uh, cross-linking in a very unique, aggressive manner to get an enhanced chemical bond and then able to uh, rid the material of any aldehyde or any aldehyde toxicity. Those, those three things are all very important for, for you to, to, to make your tissue choices. Are there any questions before I, I uh, move forward with, with Tom and, and Dr. Maris? Thank you very much for your time.